stage right now, a very, very funny guy working all over the place. Please welcome Dan Savage. So you folks enjoying springtime in New England? Huh? Wild weather, isn't it? You know, I've, I've only lived here for 10 years, and I've gotten pretty blas blasé about uh, things like snow. They say there's a blizzard coming. I don't pay any attention until I hear of biblical proportions. <laughs> biblical proportions? Boy, that's some forecast. Thou shalt accumulate 12 to 18 cubits of a frozen powdery substance. It shall make your life miserable. You shall throw thine back out in the process, and we shall call it snow. <laughs> Yeah, look, I'm no Bible scholar, but I don't remember any references in the Bible to snow. I remember rain. Noah, an ark, 40 days, 40 nights, a pair of everything, a pair of Rossignol skis, a pair of snowshoes. Look, was one of the commandments, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's snowblower? No, did Jesus say, let he who is without sin cast thee first snowball? It's not the way I remember it. So when the weather gets like this, I like to think of warmer places. Checking out spots for vacation, turns out Mexico City is not one of these places you want to go. They have so stripped the environment there, they've overdeveloped it, torn down all the trees. They now have regulations about everything concerning the environment. If you want to cut a limb off a tree, you need a permit. If you want to buy or sell a tree, you've got to do it in the black market. The black market for a tree? Can you imagine? Hey, mister, you want to score some cool shade? Come over here, check this out, man. I got some unbelievable pine trees, man. I got some primo Honduras mahogany, man. Check out the residue in those leaves, man. In the autumn, the colors are gonna blow your mind. Got an idea for a TV show. America's Funniest Criminals. We just take true stories for you and we play them back. Like the fellow walks into a convenience store in Darien, Connecticut, buys a pack of gum, pulls out a handgun, and robs the clerk for $40. $40. Yes, there was more than that in the register. This is what he needed to pay his rent, folks. <laughs> and then this poor schlub comes back to ask if he had paid for the pack of gum. A couple of tips for you would-be felons. Number one, after leaving the scene of a crime, do not return. Just get the hell out of there. Tip number two, don't be polite, take all the money. <laughs> Tip number three, you don't come back to pay for anything. You don't pay for anything, you're a criminal. It's a fringe benefit. <laughs> in our continuing series, a fellow in Colorado, he robs a bank and exits through a plate glass window. Ouch. When leaving the scene of a crime, use the door. <laughs> and don't ask the police for directions a half hour later. You look a little obvious. Shreds of glass in your hair. <laughs> yeah. And finally, bringing it right up to date, our friend, Mohammed Salami, Salami, I can't pronounce the name, the terrorist, parks his van in the World Trade Center with a few plastic explosives in it, blows the thing to pieces, and shows up and demands his deposit back. Look, fella, I don't know much about the rental business, but I think the purpose of a deposit is to make sure you bring the van back. <laughs> Look, if you pick, check page 97 of the terrorist manual, it says clearly, after blowing up the van, leave the scene of the crime. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to Allah, get on with your life, get some more plastic explosives and get on with it, fella. Uh, I think one of the reasons we've got so many funny criminals these days is because Superman is dead. You know about this in the comic strip? Superman has died. It's official. Which just goes to prove you can be invulnerable that does not prevent you from being canceled. Yes. I don't think he's really dead, though. I mean, the last comic book I saw said the world mourns the death of Superman. Huh? Look, if he was really dead, they'd be selling the adventures of a dead guy. Look, up in the air, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a dead guy. For those of you who don't leave the comic strip, you're probably wondering, how did he die? Well, let's review the facts. Superman is invulnerable. That means nothing can harm him. He's fought every weirdo, bad guy, and strange creature in the known universe for the last 50 years, been perfectly healthy. Then he marries Lois Lane. <laughs> Three years later, he's dead. Yes. Another fellow in a cape that's kind of strange? Dracula. Did you guys see the movie, Dracula? 
Yeah. Well, I did. I thought it was a very different movie experience. Because I never had popcorn with garlic before. <laughs> the ad slogan was kind of touching. Love never dies. Kind of a romantic theme. I had one I submitted. They turned it down. Maybe it was a little too blunt for them. Tell me what you think. Love sucks. <laughs> and you notice every time we elect a Southern Democrat to be president, they make another version of Dracula? Does this mean something? And they said it in England a hundred years ago. I was thinking, what if they made a modern version? Wouldn't it be kind of clumsy? I mean, what's Dracula dressed to do in that black tie and cape? Be a head waiter? <laughs> Good evening. My name is Count Dracula. And before I tell you about tonight's special meal, I have a few questions for you. Yes. Are you a member of a high-risk category? <laughs> well, we can joke about it, but being newly single, I do have to think about safe sex. I practice safe sex. I practice, and I practice. I practice, and I practice. Did you hear in the news, Marcel Marcel, the famous mime, was arrested for breaking and entering. Apparently, he tripped a silent alarm. I was cleaning my contact lenses the other night, and I needed a new bottle of saline solution, and I went looking for it, and I found the solution, but then I forgot the question. <laughs> Do you think when skunks are walking through the woods, they'll turn to each other and say, Phew, man, a person's been through here. It stinks. <laughs> I was homophobic until recently I confronted my fear. I bought a home. <laughs> I just broke up with a woman who tortured me by constantly playing Sade records. <laughs> she was Shadistic. <laughs> Maybe I deserved her. I listened to nothing but the, Mam the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. I'm a masochist. I want to meet the algebra wizard who designed the four-way stop sign. I know they cancel each other out. I go right through. And my kids wonder, why are we learning this crap, Dad? Huh? So you can use this someday in your adult life like I do. So my, my uncle, who has emphysema, just turned 93, got out of the hospital in time for his 93rd birthday, and my crazy family gets together, throws a birthday party for him, gets a great big cake, big enough to put 93 candles in, and maybe it wasn't the smartest thing asking him to blow the candles out, because we forgot to turn his oxygen tank off. Yeah, the cake melted, it was real interesting. Next day, the insurance adjuster had a lot of questions. But it worked out fine, because he did want to be cremated. We couldn't put his ashes in one of those little urns. We had to create a great big box because we couldn't tell his ashes from the rest of the house. But we respect his wishes. We leave the lid off the box because, you see, he was claustrophobic. My daughter told me about something the other day and I didn't handle it well. Her first boyfriend. Yeah. I, I, I said, I want to meet this boy. I just flew right off. I grilled him. I said, Timmy, what are you going to do with your life when you graduate? kindergarten. <laughs> Look, just because she's six doesn't mean she doesn't understand about sex. We were watching a movie. The two romantic leads were fighting. She leaned over to me. She said, Dad, they haven't had sex yet, have they? <laughs> and she was right. So I asked her what she knew about sex, and this is how she explained it to me. She said, well, a man and a woman get together to make a baby because a woman has like one egg and a man has like a gazillion germ cells. <laughs> I like that explanation. I'm not going to correct it. Yeah, honey, stay away from Timmy. Way too many germs. <laughs> She's always been crazy about Barbie. Barbie this and Barbie that. She told me when she grows up she wants to look just like Barbie, except she'll have a vagina. <laughs> and a boyfriend complete with penis. <laughs> this is every father's dream. <laughs> My father, my father's like a new man. He's married a woman who's 25 years younger than he is. And he's got nothing but advice for me about my love life now. I need this. He said, son, I just want you to find a woman like I did and be happy like I am. I said, dad, if I found a woman like you did, I'd be in jail. <laughs> She'd be 13. <laughs> Could only see her on visiting days. She'd be upset because I couldn't help her with her homework, and I'd be so embarrassed because I'd wind up on that show, America's Funniest Criminals. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thank you.